So what we're going to do is we're going to try, we definitely need to compound this. So that, you know, there's different stages of polish. There's, so if you notice this one, this one's a heavier, high performance compound. So this is a one step polish and it removes up to 1200 grit sanding marks. So, you know, normally when you get a car, and now most of these modern cars, they don't wet sand them anymore, but you know, if you went to a body shop and they painted the car, then they, you know, the clear coat's all globby and stuff, so then they wet sand it to really bring out the shine. And wet sanding would make this super dull, and then, so you'd use like a 1200 grit, and then a 3000 grit, and then you would use a compound, and what they'd usually use is a rotary, a rotary buffer like what you see with a big wool pad on it, and then, um, and, and then you would do like a, a dual action polisher and kind of kind of finish jewel it out with a with a finishing polish. So what we're going to do, the reason why you can't you can't really wet sand a car like this, the clear coat's just too thin. So if we wet sanded it, we would remove half the clear. And you really don't have a lot of orange peel in the Corvette. You know, it's you know the orange peel like on my my GT3 is real real peely. Um, it's harder to see because it's really dialed in, but you know there's waves mm -hmm. in the clear coat. The this this paint actually here you go. You can see see the yeah you got some right yeah. yeah. This section isn't bad, like... but yeah. So we could remove the orange peel by wet sanding, but then we'd remove most of the paint and or most of the clear coat. And it's just it's just too high risk on on these cars the way that the, the because the paint isn't as thick. Because if you go to a body shop, they'll lay on four coats of color and then six coats of clear. At the, at, you know, at the factory for time, they can't let it dry and cure. So they just blast it on there, let it sit for a day and then blast on the clear coat and you're done. Um, so, so we need to be careful with that. But, so what we're gonna do, we're not gonna wet sand, we're gonna compound. So we're gonna try this compound first. This is a, I would say in the, in the world of compounds, if we had, you know, aggressive and conservative, this one's kind of toward the higher side of the middle. You know, this would be like a, like a moderately aggressive. The, the beauty of this stuff is this is some of the latest technology. What it does is it breaks down. So it starts out with, with thicker particles. And then as you make consecutive passes, it breaks down and gets thinner and thinner and thinner. So it actually finishes pretty nicely. Some compounds, it'll look dull and, and, and really drab. This stuff, in a lot of cars, you could probably finish with it. On black, we'll need to finish with it with a different polish. Um, but let's, uh, let's see if this, if this doesn't take it out, then we'll try something a little bit more aggressive. Okay. Yeah, we might have to make a couple of passes. So we'll try a couple of passes of this before we do something more aggressive. And we'll see, you know, if we can get, you know, the water spot will come right out. But some of these finer, you know, these scratches, mm -hmm. we'll see if we can get those out with, with, with just this stuff. All right. So I have, this is the five inch. This is the six, six inch orbital. And what I'm gonna do for this application, let me turn this over here. So what I have is I ordered a specifically cut pad for this five inch, because we're gonna use not a foam pad, but we're gonna use microfiber. When I'm cutting or using a compound, I like to use microfiber instead of I'll show you what the, what the difference here is here in a second. A microfiber pad instead of a, a foam pad. But when I'm finishing, I like to use foam. Yeah, the guy from uh, Meguiar's Solar Sol foam pads. Yep. So are you afraid with the microfiber for any reason? Or? Nope. It's just a preference. I forget how this thing works. Jeez. This one's brand new, I haven't used this one yet. I'll show you what we're doing here. And are you going to a smaller buffer? Because of your ease of getting into well, I have this, areas? what this is, notice the pad mm -hmm. is a little bit bigger, or the, the, this connection is a little bit bigger, but it's a little smaller than this. Mm -hmm. What I did is I ordered a custom made, so this is a custom, um, um, pad for the microfiber, Mike Wire's microfiber, and I'll show you why, why we care about that here. So if, if I use the normal five inch, notice it doesn't, 
It doesn't, so, so you're, you're not getting this, this, this kind of folds over and you just don't get, it's just not as efficient. So there's a guy called Buff Daddy who's like the grandfather of detailing. Um, he, they create this and you have to be careful that we don't, we don't hit this edge on the paint. Um, but now I have a direct contact, so the whole pad is now useful. So I wanted to, I wanted to test this out today because I, I, don't have to, I don't have to compound my cars because they're dialed in. I only have to, so, so this, this step is really only necessary with a compound. So I'm putting this different backing plate on here. And you can see the microfiber. Nothing really special. This is just a little bit coarser microfiber. They have microfiber finishing. But just from my experience with most paints, you have to just trial and error this stuff. With most paints, the microfiber does a better job cutting and the, the foam does a better job finishing. And these are also washable. Mm -hmm. Yep. I wash it with Dawn in the, uh, in the sink. Because most of these these uh, most of the polishes are water based, so they wash right out. Okay. All right, so we got that. Yeah, switch that off. And then. Okay. And then we'll get this one out to the big one. Not even close. This one because I haven't done that yet. Not too scientific. Black marker. It will stay there forever. Yep. I mainly just wanted to get this out because I wanted to play with it. And it's not really going to matter all that much. And once I show you how to do this, then we can just start banging this thing out. Um, the one thing you always want to do just to be safe. And with microfiber, you need to re-agitate the pad. So what will happen is this will start to get kind of gummed up with a polish. So after every other pass or so, I'll grab this out and just kind of re you know, reactivate the, okay. the microfiber. And this is just a good step to make sure there's nothing, nothing in there. And then we'll do one last three inch. So we'll probably need this one for the lower. Might need that one for the bottom part. I'm telling you, you're gonna love this part. Super fun when we get to see the the, the difference in the paint after we do this. How many times do you do compound? Once ever, usually. Like I, I'll never have to compound my car again. As long as you take care of, as long as you wash it like we did with the foam, you take real good care of it. You'll never have to compound it again. We'll, all we'll do then is just polish it. Just do like maybe like this is a compounding polish from here. Then you would go down to a or up to whatever you want to say up to like a like a like a SIP 1500, which is a polish, but like a medium polish instead of a compounding, you know, heavy polish. So you want a black car, you might need to still do a two step. But like on my cars, I only do a one step. So I'll do a one step just maintenance. I call it a maintenance correction. Uh, and we'll just do that, that on a periodic basis just to, just to keep it dialed in. All right, so let's see if we can get this on camera. Oh, we get to use my new polishing rags too. These. I like them. Yeah, it's a dual pile microfiber, soft towel. I just, you know, I have tried. I actually just went through an exercise of ordering a bunch of towels and it turns out I like these the best. Bring me some slack. So nothing real scientific here. Just 
put some polish on the pad. You know, about that much. The more you put on, the more chance you have of flicking it all over the place. I'm gonna spread at four. And then we're gonna polish at six. And I'm gonna do like a two foot section. You know, you don't wanna to do too good. If you do too big of a section, then it'll dry. You know, and just take notice of the speed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out applying some pressure. You know, so I'm not, you know, I'm not hammering on it because I don't want to dent the hood. But I, you know, I've got, you know, I've got at least my elbow into it. And then as I make successive passes, we'll probably make. I'm going to make eight passes here. So four this way and four that way. Okay. And then we'll get the light out and see see what it looks like. So we'll see if we get these, you know, some of these scratches out. Um, but I'm going to release pressure as I get to like six, five, six passes and I'm going to start to, you know, I'll keep my hand on it and then toward the end I'll kind of, kind of loosen it up. Now I'm not finishing here, so my last pass will probably be just the weight of the, of the polisher. And you can't screw this up, so it's just my sort of, I sort of get into the same procedure, same, same, same way of doing it. So when you're threading it on, you can do it quickly. Notice my black line's still moving. If I hold it too tight, it'll slow it down. Nice, slow, and controlled. off your touch up there. The touch up paint came off. we got it's gonna need more than one pass I think always also do one of these jobs make sure you don't have anything in the pile of the microfiber so we got the vast majority of these deeper scratches, mm -hmm. we may not be able to get some of those out. I'll show you this. Get the light out and see if we can see a, a significant difference. Might need to use something a little more aggressive. I think we got a lot of 
Yeah, this would have taken off, you know, 80% of it. So it took off you know, a lot of the surface. Let's try um let's try the D three hundred. There's still a lot on there. You know what? Let's try one oh five. Put another bead of tape back on there. You know, it's just trial and error to see what works on your paint. Yeah, yeah, but you know, we can get it looking pretty much like new. Now it's already popping more. Mm -hmm. Versus sure. here, right. and we got you know a good seventy percent of the stuff out. Some of these deeper surface imperfections aren't going to come out, and then we had a little touch-up paint right. there that pulled it right out, and it didn't get. You that. didn't go over that actually. Oh yeah. Okay. Well then, that's why I didn't get that. Right. I'm going to do a little bit smaller area. Okay. Where's that tape go? This is McGuire. Yeah, this is M105. So this is more aggressive yeah, than what we were just using. Well, this is the stuff you need to be careful with because it's, yeah, I mean, not careful, but you just want to be a little smarter about how much of this you use or how many times you use this on a car. All right, I'm going to use the big boy. I actually like having a little extra because of this, the curb. I actually like having a little bit of the extra, pad. yeah, pad. That's, even though it's not technically as mechanically efficient. Start this over, okay. All right. I don't even know if I ever took the, I never used this stuff. Or I haven't used this bottle, yeah. The trash is in that big. Container. So again, we can't, you know, you have to do this 15 times before you would blow through the clear coat. So you don't have to be too scared about, you know, messing with this stuff. Wow, it's already popping a lot more. Yeah. But let's just see.
wait till it stops. You can pull it off, and it'll shoot polish all over the car. That's the, the old secret trick. Ooh, I like it. I think that's going to be our combo. You know, we could get these out, but it's just going to be too much. I, I wouldn't, you know, we have to sit there and grind the crap out of it. Wow, that looks great. Oh, yeah. You know, some of these little, these deeper imperfections, they're just not, you know, they're not going to come out unless we really, unless we were to wet sand and... So that's going to be our combo. So now let's figure out on this section, let's figure out what our finishing, our finishing move should be. And then we'll apply that to the rest of the car. So you know, one way to test out, you know, we tried the FG 400, that wasn't enough. So now the 105 is what we're going to use with the microfiber. And then now we want to test to see what finishes the best. So what we're probably going to do, we're going to use a, a finishing, I'm going to first try a foam pad, a finishing foam pad. I just wonder if they were better off going over this one more time. I think it's pretty good. I mean, we could, if we wanted to get it dialed just a little bit more, we'd make probably two passes with the 105. You know, two six or eight section passes. Then it'll really make a big difference when we, yeah, let me make another four passes or five passes with the 105 and then we're going to test out what the best um, finishing polish is and then we'll take the tape off and bang out the, you know, the rest of the car, the rest of the, the front clip. You want you can just take that home with you and give it back to me when you're done with it I mean that, that bottle is gonna last me the rest of my entire life and yours I, I have, I don't think it's the you might have 205 That's the or you might have a one. Oh oh yeah that is that is nice buddy so let's do a finish and then we'll pull it off and look at it really closely and see what it looks like. So what you would normally do, once you figure out what the combo is, then you just do that forever, you know, on your car. Now would you use, still use both or just go to the 105 from the get-go? No, just 105 right from the get-go, yeah. Yeah, so the FG is not, not aggressive enough for us. So now we're going to foam pad it up. I'm gonna try this as a white finishing pad. So you can tell it's finished because it's softer. Yeah. Versus yeah, I have some 
it's a, like a polishing pad. So, so here's a real polishing pad, but we're using microfiber instead of that. This is a medium polishing pad. Okay. And then this is a lighter polishing pad, and then this is a finishing. Okay. So, you know, just sort of the different coarseness or thicknesses of. So normally if I were doing a one step, like if, like if, like for my car, what I did was I actually did a finishing pad with a finishing polish because my the paint was really dialed in. Okay. But if um, if my paint was a little bit more jacked up, this is for a wash mitt for the auto scrub that it doesn't work as well. Okay. So what you can do is as you're washing the car, after you're washing, spray the clay lube on it and use this for auto scrub. I just don't think it works as well. And then these are the more aggressive. I don't like these, especially on black because it's more aggressive than the fine. Notice the pad is stiffer, yeah. and it's and it's got more more rubber to it. Do you grow all there, what Adam? Um, those you get from Detailer's Domain. Adam's doesn't have the, the auto scrub, I don't think. Use code uh, BMW at Detailer's Domain, and yeah. that's where I buy all my stuff, and you get 10% off. All right, so we got the pad. Let's try, let's just go straight to the ultra finishing. So you can see this is ultra fine. This is uh, super finished 4500 men's urn. The only way to figure this stuff out is find some dude like me who's already tried it or buy it and try it, you know. And wow, that looks so much better. It's incredible. Now it's now this what what this will do is jewel it. So now this is more important that I follow that pressure, 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 a little less pressure, a little less pressure, a little less pressure, a little less pressure, and then almost removing pressure. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I probably, because it, the, the 105 finishes okay, um, so I probably only need to make about five passes, maybe six. Oops. Yeah, so you are gonna have to. So this is barely removing any pain at all. It's just dialing it in, making it shine. So there's one. That's two. Three. Now I'm going to release a little. Four. I'm actually lifting up a little bit now. That was five. I don't know if this actually does anything, but it makes me feel good. I was Mike Phillips taught me this, one of the you know famous detailers. And now if you wanted to be really anal, you probably should use a different towel for the finishing, but you know, I remember always check, make sure there isn't a leaf or anything. We don't want to jack up the hour we just spent, you know, dialing that section in. That's our ticket, you can tell already. Oh yeah, we've got, yeah. So let's, actually let's do this. Turn the light off.
Oh, yeah. They're still... Take a look at the difference. Yeah. Now the wax will fill some of that, but yeah, it's like night and day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We could, you see, you could sit here and just keep going at right. it, but you know, there's a point where you get diminishing returns. You know, how much paint do we really want, especially on a 15 year old car, right. do we really want to remove? You know, once you wax this and get it out in the sun, you'll still be able to see some of these, some of these, you know, some of these toweling marks and scratches, but, but compared to that, yeah. it's going to pop so much more. Yeah. So, you, you know, we could sit here and just grind away and get, we could get all that out, but at what risk i don't we don't have a depth gauge either so you know if you are doing older cars you the depth gauge a decent depth gauge is like i don't know 1500 bucks so that's going to be our ticket okay. two passes of 105 and then one pass of uh 4500 on the foam pad so let's so what we're going to do is we'll do the whole we're going to do the whole front and just, you wouldn't have to tape it off. You just remember the sections you've done. And if you over, you know, we want to overpass our correction, our, our, step, our spot spaces a little bit. You know, because usually toward the end over here, it didn't polish as good as I did in the middle. So we'll do 105 on the whole thing um, in that. So I'll let you, you can use the six inch and I'll use the five inch. Okay. And um, you'll work on that side. I'll work on this side and we'll dial that in. So we're going to make eight passes. So. You know, there's one, two, three. So make eight passes uh, with the with the 105, and you don't even really need to release pressure at all. Uh, and then after we're done with the whole thing, then we'll do the we'll do the foam and finish it, okay. and then we'll put some some uh, sealant on it. Or uh, we'll do a. I'll show you what I use. Inexpensive, but good good stuff. Do you care about it looking shiny, you know, and just being clean all the time? Well, I would prefer to have clean paint, but dialed in clean paint. You know, it's like you, you, there's, you know, there's a happy medium here in life. And, you know, some people would prefer to just have a, you know, a clean looking car and not worry so much about the little, because most people don't, don't know they're there, you know. Right. right. But that's how you get them out. And that's how you, you know, we, we follow that washing procedure that we did and that drying procedure. So you're blowing most of the car off, spray it with a, with a, with a spray, use a, a nice clean, you know, like Adam's great white towel. And I'm not, you know, I'm not buffing it out. I'm just, you know, dragging it on the, on, on the paint and then you won't, you won't get scratches or swirls. And even then black, you're still going to need to compound it out. You know, you're still going to need to compound it maybe once every two years, once every three years. Uh, and, and, and in between like every six months, that's when I do a maintenance correction. That's where I'll use like that SF 4500 in the foam pad. Uh, so I'll clay, I'll, I'll decontaminate it, strip the wax, um, then spray the iron out on it, then do the auto scrub, and then just do a one step. What we're doing is a multi-step paint correction where I'm not really even correcting anything. I'm just jeweling out the paint. You know, I'm just going over it just to get any little minor imperfection out, imperfections out of it. But when we shoot, when we put some wax on this and get this out in the sun, and we'll, we'll look at this versus the roof, it's gonna look significantly different. And like I said, we could get all this out, but being the, you know, the age of the paint, it's why take that risk? Because you know, then what'll happen is it'll be real shiny and it'll dull out. You know, if we go through the clear, you know, we'll see it on the microfiber pad. Once you do that, that's it. I've never done that. Um, Play bar and it'll be clean. Uh -huh. Then I'll go like go to show spray the detail or you know mm -hmm. what you say not to do wipe it off. And when it's in a really direct sunlight, it almost looks yellowish. Right. It doesn't have a deep look to it anymore. Right. You know. Yeah, and that's the that's the you know sort of the curing or the yellowing of the clear coat you know we're gonna we're probably removing all that and that's what this is really gonna make this pop so even though we got say 90% of the, the scratches out 90% of the swirls out um, it's still gonna look significantly different once we once we put a, a wax on it and we're probably gonna pull most of your most of your um, the, you, you might want to go and, and retouch up but yeah I just bought a new what you I'll show you I'll send you a video of um, Larry Larry Cosilla is the uh, like the detailer that everybody watches and learns from. 
um, and he has a special procedure on how to how to do it. Yeah, yeah. Use like at the end of a pencil eraser, and you know it shows you how to do it. It's a big long process, but um, well, like it, I said, some of these are. This is from you and I going to have the coffee. Right. This one, when I, a lot of these are when just this week, yeah. This week. Yeah. I mean, I had some. Right. From the track days, you can't help, and I usually tape up when I go to a track day. But yeah. It's still like these here. Are, all these are new. But it's not bad. I mean, for a 15-year-old car, I mean. No. Well, I was actually yeah. thinking about getting front tip painted. Yeah, the whole front tip. Yeah. The nice thing about black is it's easy to match, you know. Well, they still have to blend it, believe it or not. Uh, yeah. They still feather it. Like, if he did, if he just did a hood, he would take part of the fender. Yep. Once he does the fender, he has to do part of the door. Yep. That's what he told me mm -hmm. uh, when I was up in Jersey. Just to try to get it all, you know, so it blends rather than I an abrupt. I a guy a couple of years ago, and he told me, he, he goes, dude, you're wasting your money. I'm a touch that car. He said, I take it to somebody and have their little things touched up. And he says, I, I'll take your money. He said, that's what he said. I'll take but your money. But it doesn't money. look bad enough to, yeah. No, he said, no. And he was the owner, and he's telling me that. I didn't, I, I didn't do it. Well, because then once you paint it, then it's then it's branded as, you know, guys who are going to buy it later will know that it's been painted. Well, the whole thing with that is once I started modifying it, it's lost value. Yeah. And, Not and, that they're a great value anyway, because it's, they made so many C5s. But here's uh, your When Denise sold her, she bought it from a place called uh, Paul Betts. Mm-hmm. Other than, uh, I think I put the chrome grill up here to the front, the nose, the mouth, and one little other, and he goes, fine. I said, how about mine? Because I was going to buy a new one right. and get rid of both of them. Right. And he says, what'd you do to it? And I told him, he said, I don't even want to look at it. <laughs> he right. said, because a guy will come in and say, the car is stock. On the way home, put headers on it, this on it, that on it. He's fine with that. But, but if somebody else did it, yep. He right. you'd beat the shit out of the car. And that's what I always do when, I, when I'm done with the car, I demodify it. Because yeah. the other thing is you don't get your money out of your parts anyway. No. All right, so let's switch this. When, uh, you Angelo can... sold his, uh, he had a C5 convertible, and he sold it, traded it in on a Z06. Mm -hmm. They weren't happy because he had headers. Yeah, you gotta you gotta put it back to stock if you want to get your money out of it. All right, so you get that you get that whole procedure. Remember, just err on the side of going a little slower than yeah. faster. And um, let's do you'll do one you know eight passes. Excuse me, eight passes. We'll wipe it, and then um, and then do another probably eight, six or eight, something like that. We should be good. I'm interested to see if I can get this water this etched spot out.
remember, small sections. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just not doing as much. Is that coming loose? Here, let me see that. Is your water spot gone? Yeah, it's actually lifting off the Oh, yeah, this thing's toast. Uh, what the heck? Well, let's hope that we don't blow through the other one because that's all I got left. I need to order some more of these. No. No, they blow through them every, you know. I've used that thing forever. Let's make sure this is on here good too. <clears throat> yeah, you're good. Yeah, just make sure um, for the sake of your paint, just keep you know make sure that the thing stays flat because if you, you know, if you come rock over the edge, then and you hit the thing, hit the paint wrong. You'll you'll ruin you'll you'll hit the you know you'll make a straight line right to the metal. Wow, that looks incredible. So, you know, you want to do like a like a two foot section. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing too much. Right now. Yeah, because I mean, the, what happens is the polish dries. Oh. You want to get that off before it dries because it's a pain in the rear to get off if it's if it dries. Because you know the polish is only effective if it's wet. So you could do the whole section, but but the problem is by the time you get back over to here, it's all you know it's dry. Okay. Now when we do the finishing, you don't need That's quite as much. Wipe this off the yeah, here you can grab another one. I got fifty of those things. So you see how this gums up? See how this gets, and that's why you reagitate it. It doesn't hurt anything, it just, it just doesn't work as well. Oh, yeah, You're right. You know, detailing, as much as detailing is fun, you know, some of it you need to be as somewhat efficient, otherwise you're going to be driving yourself freaking crazy. Same thing with 